In this video, we're going to learn how phase stability can be controlled with both temperature and pressure simultaneously. All right, this video is a culmination of the last two in which we have seen independently how you can control the stability of a phase with pressure at constant temperature and with temperature at constant pressure. All right, so all of that is dictated by this variation of the Moore Gibbs energy on pressure and temperature, and what I have here is the variation of the Moore Gibbs energy with temperature at constant pressure, uh, which is going to be, we're going to call it P1. Now, I've decided to draw the lines all in the same blue trace because I'm going to use a different trace to see what would happen to these lines if now we decided to change the pressure. Okay, and that is going to be on a red trace. All right, but before we do that, let's uh, recapitulate here the most important aspect of this diagram. First, the slopes are the minus molar entropies, so the slope of the gas is going to be more negative than that of the liquid than that of the solid. Great. Then the lines or, or the, the faces that are stable are always the uh, ones of lowest molar Gibbs energy. So in this region, you have the, the gas stable, in that region, you have the, the liquid stable phase. At the very low temperatures, you have that the solid is a stable phase. At the crossing points, which I'm going to label, you have an equilibrium between the two phases, and that is what we call the boiling point, if the pressure is equal to the vapor pressure of a liquid, and then this is going to be equal to the fusion point or the freezing point. Right, very good then. So the question then is whether you can affect the boiling point and the freezing point of this substance by changing the pressure, right? So we're going to take this graph and now we're going to build on top of it uh, the lines for a different pressure and see if there's something that we can learn from it. All right, so I'm going to decide that the pressure now increases to P sub 2. Okay, so P sub 2 is going to be larger than P sub 1. Okay, so uh, these lines are going to change. And we know that because the molar Gibbs energy depends on pressure. And it depends on pressure as the molar volume, right? So notice that if I increase the pressure, if I make this differential of P positive, right, because the molar volume is positive, then that means that the uh, molar Gibbs energy is going to increase. And it, it will increase by a factor that is proportional to the molar volume of that phase, all right? So if I take the line of the gas right here, and I can take this one point on that line, get P1, what I do now is I hold constant the temperature, that means that I'm going to move vertically in this axis, and I just have to redraw how the molar Gibbs energy would be for that point if the pressure would be were to increase. Well, so we know that if the pressure increases, the molar Gibbs energy should increase. So the point that I'm going to uh, draw is going to be higher, larger uh, molar Gibbs energy than what I have right here. And the offset, how high it goes, depends on the molar volume. Right, so for a gas, the molar volume is about a thousand times greater than that of a liquid or a solid. And what that means is that the line of the gas that I'm going to have right here is going to be offset by about a, a factor of a thousand times or so, uh, more offset than the liquid or the solid, right? So let's see if we can draw that uh, in an easy way. All right, so again, notice that if I increase the pressure, then the molar Gibbs energy should increase by a factor that is uh, the molar volume, right? So I simply uh, draw that offset, and again, this is related to the molar volume of the gas, right? That is how it changes. And now I could repeat that for every point in this line, right? I, I can go to this point, and then you'll have a point right there, and then another point right there, and what you will see is that there's going to be a line that is uh, going to be something like this. Now, these lines are not going to be perfectly parallel, Okay, but we're going to do an approximation that makes them parallel. All right, so that's, that's that. That's how the molar Gibbs energy uh, is for uh, the gas under that new high pressure. Okay, what's going to happen for the liquid and the solid? Well, so the same thing is going to happen for the liquid and the solid, right? If you change the pressure, then the more, if you increase the pressure, then the molar Gibbs energy should also increase, and it does so by the molar volume of the phase. But again, for the solid and the liquid, what happens is that the offset, right, that molar volume is much smaller than that of a gas. So what I will have here is lines that are uh, a little bit higher, 
that the offset of these lines compared to that of the gas are going to be much, much, much smaller. Okay, so let's see if I can draw this appropriately. All right, so for the liquid, I'm going to draw something like this, right? So a line that I'm going to draw parallel to it. In this case, this, is, this line is fairly parallel because the molar volume doesn't uh, change too much with temperature. Okay, so here we go. All right, so these lines should be parallel. And then for the solid, I also, I also have to draw uh, a line that is offset by the molar volume. And here I'm going to choose to draw a graph that represents most substances, but it does not represent water and other substances in which the molar volume of uh, the solid is larger than the molar volume of the liquid. Okay, that is an exception for water. Right, uh, so this is not going to be water, and what that means is that the molar volume of the solid is smaller than the molar volume of the liquid. Ultimately, what that means is that the offset of the line at high pressure uh, with respect to uh, uh, the line at low pressure is going to be a little smaller than that of the liquid, right? So let's see if I can draw that appropriately there. Okay, good. That seems to be working pretty good. I hope this uh, uh, gets captured in the video. Again, importantly, uh, the offset between those two lines, this is the molar volume of the liquid, and the offset between those two lines, that is the molar volume of the gas, uh, the solid. Good. All right, so what do we learn from here? Well, what we learn is that when, we, when you change pressure, then the freezing point and the boiling point also change. Now, if you concentrate on the red lines and the crossings between them, right, what you have is that at very high temperatures, then the gas is the phase of lowest molar Gibbs energy, which it should. But then notice that now the crossing with the liquid line is here. And that's a different temperature than what we had at uh, lower pressure. Okay, so here is something new that we learned. It turns out that the boiling point of a substance goes up when you increase the pressure. Okay, that's something that we learned here. What else did we learn? What about the freezing point? Well, the freezing point is right here. Okay, so uh, that is the new freezing point. Okay, what we also learn is that the freezing point of a substance also increases when you increase pressure. Now, there's something in this graph that has not turned out very well, and that is the fact that it seems that the separation between the freezing points is larger than the separation between the boiling points, but in reality, that is actually opposite. And the reason that it hasn't worked out well is because it's very difficult to draw that to a scale. Again, notice that I have to draw a gap between these lines that is about a thousand times greater than the gap between these lines, and the, the gap between these lines is only different by about 10% from those lines. So, so it turns out that that results, uh, that turns out to be quite difficult to draw, but in reality, the boiling points uh, actually are more affected by a change in pressure than the freezing, point, uh, uh, freezing points are, and that's something that is not covered realistically in this video. However, the overall trend stands, right? For a substance that is not water, or any other substance with uh, uh, those anomalous molar volumes for the solid and liquid, what you always find is that the boiling point and the freezing point increase when you increase pressure. Now, something that I encourage you to do is to figure out on your own uh, how this graph would differ for water and those substances in which the molar volume of the solid is actually greater than the molar volume of the liquid. I'm going to give you a hint, right? So the only thing that is going to change in that graph is that the offset of the red line from the blue line for the liquid will be smaller than the offset of the red line to the uh, blue line for the solid. Okay, so notice how here for this substance, right, that gap is larger than this one, and that's because the molar volume of the liquid is larger uh, uh, than the molar volume of the solid. Okay, so for uh, water, it will be uh, exactly the, uh, the opposite. All right, so uh, I'm hoping that uh, you can draw it on your own, and uh, uh, what you will actually learn is that if you increase pressure, then the boiling point will go up, but if you increase pressure, the freezing point will go down. Okay, that's what happens for water, which is anomalous with respect to most other substances. Right, so in this video, we have learned a little bit more about how pressure and temperature can control phase stability 
uh, in particular, we have seen how you can alter freezing points and boiling points, points of equilibrium between phases, by changing the pressure.